It's a new year and you're trying to pick up a new hobby and you're curious about instant photography. Well, welcome. Sorry to your wallet though. But you may be wondering to yourself, which is the best one to buy? But more specifically, what is the best one to start with? If you're just a beginner, well, you are in luck. Let's dive into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. So you may notice there's quite a bit of options out there in the instant photography world. There's stuff from the 70s all the way up until today. Instant photography has been around for quite some time and it's really, really cool and really, really fun. Expensive, but fun. So if you're just starting out, you're probably doing it casually. And there's one particular brand and camera style I send people to when I get asked this question, which I get asked this question all the time. And that is starting with Fuji Instax. Yeah, go with the mini film. All of these cameras here shoot the Instax mini film. This right here, this little guy. It's small, but I send people here because of the entry cost to get started. It doesn't cost a ton versus like say Polaroid. And even the Instax Square and Instax Wide, which we won't get into this video, that's a little bit more expensive. Instax Mini Film, you can pick up 20 photos for right around $13, $14, depending on where you buy it from. I always tell people to go to Walmart. They somehow always have the best deals. Sometimes Amazon has some pretty good deals on it and I'll leave some links in the description for you. But again, I send people to the Instax Mini line because the cameras are pretty relatively available. I mean, it is the most popular film format out there currently in the instant world. Cameras aren't too expensive and you can find them in pretty much any retail store. See, when I was a kid, I was coming from film to digital, but nowadays people are going from digital to film. So, and once you get started in shooting this film, you're gonna start to realize it may not be for you. And that's why I want people to start here because they don't have to spend a ton of money to find out if you even like to shoot this. Now, if you're just gonna be a casual shooter, shoot it like once or twice a year, this is still where I would send you just because of the cost. Because every time you take a picture, it costs money. And I've done videos on all of these cameras, except for this one, but it's basically the same as this one. <laughs> just like a little fun special edition one. But I've done videos on these, there's links in the description below. But to going back to the best camera to start with, I would literally tell you to go find some Insax Mini 8 or above. This is an Insax Mini 9, super simple to use, point, shoot, you're gonna get a photo. You really can't mess up shooting with this camera. And the cost of it is pretty cheap. You can find them used. I mean, I've seen these as low as like 10 bucks. And typically when you find them used, it's coming from somebody that's only used it a couple of times and just wants to get rid of it. So it's kind of brand new in most cases. But if you were to buy it brand new, you can probably find them for around 50 to 60 bucks. I know there are different versions and models of these. They're pretty much the same. I just like to tell people to go get the older model because it's gonna be cheaper. <laughs> but if you're just a casual shooter, doesn't really care about the full effect of like shooting in like the purest form. This is the camera I would send you to get. This is the Fuji Instax Mini Evo. It's a digital camera that prints out your photos. It's not the most purest that some people will say. A lot of people say this should never exist, but those people are honestly stupid. Sorry, just gonna say it, call how I see it. You get to preview your photos before you even print them and you can store your photos just like a regular digital camera. With the rest of these cameras, you point and you shoot and the photo ejects automatically and then you have to wait to see your photo. There's a whole pros and cons to that, which we won't get into. But if you wanna see a full breakdown of this camera, there's a link in the description below. It retails for $200 though. And that is if you can find it. Right now, still currently, <laughs> this camera has been out for about a year or plus, and it's still extraordinarily hard to find, and people are upselling this for quite a bit of money. And I highly recommend it if you're just starting out and you happen to have the cash. It's a really great little thing to have. It's small and it's compact, it's pretty great. Now, if you just wanna find out for the absolute cheapest, go with one of these Insax Mini 8 or above, you're gonna be just fine. And you're gonna get some great looking photos. Now, the size, like I said, it's not the most desirable size. There's a lot of better options out there for larger formats. Like the next step up from this would be the Instax Square and then the Instax Wide Film. And then there's a whole other topic of Polaroid. This isn't a Polaroid. This is an Instax photo. It's like Band-Aid or Xerox or Oreos even technically or, or Kleenex. Yeah, it's just a name brand. 
But if you wanna get your feet wet, I send people to Insects Mini. What are your thoughts? I would love to know in the comments below. Let's chat. And which camera do you currently have or which one you're about to buy? Let me know in the comments below too. Would love to know. That's all I got for you in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.